South Africa is waking up this morning to the return of some of the lockdown restrictions from level five. The ban on the sale of alcohol and a nighttime curfew have been reintroduced to try and slow the spread of COVID-19. The president last night also chastising those who continue to ignore lockdown regulations, he says, and those who fail to take the virus seriously. He says it's up to all of us to do our bit to flatten the curve, but many feel the rules are confusing. That recent miscommunication over the digging of graves and who can forget the Eastern Cape scooter project adding to the frustrations of people regarding government's handling of the crisis. Let's unpack it all. Professor Somadora Fikeni, political analyst at the University of South Africa, joins us now via our Skype line from Pretoria. And Professor, I think, you know, that perhaps is the first question for our interview. Has government scored an own goal here? just in its handling of the COVID-19 crisis. You saw the president last night looking very, very frustrated as he tried to emphasize again the need for people to take it seriously, to take all of the precautions necessary, not to gather, not to have parties. But there was so much confusion in the past few months over cigarette bans, uh, the uh, scooter project in the Eastern Cape, the communication over graves being dug, is perhaps government responsible uh, for the situation we find ourselves in, just in terms of the attitude of South Africans? Well, I would say this has two parts to it. There is one part which government has to deal with in coordinating our national efforts. And we are in uncharted waters. If you look across the world, not many governments have got this one right. Mm. But at the same time, there are mistakes, obviously. Uh, for example, the issue of the digging of the graves was one of the disastrous PR exercises because you can't be projecting that at the peak of this virus, at the very most, you may have 50,000 deaths, and yet you dig one million graves when even the world has not reached half a million at this moment. So that in itself was quite ridiculous. The second one, the scooters in the Eastern Cape, the vacillation, where you find that it was said to be for the passengers in the rural areas, then later on it says it's for carrying, uh, you know, the uh, medicinal uh, material. When hospitals and the health care workers need the equipment to simply tackle this particular challenge. But at another level, though, no government anywhere in the world can on its own control contain this. It needs all the key stakeholders, the citizens, the trade unions, the business sector, everybody to come to party. So we also have some responsibility to uh, take here. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you could see the president's frustration uh, last night in that address really trying to drive home again the seriousness of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, you can see from the behavior of people, you know, just take a drive around your own community and you'll see sort of pockets of people that are walking around without masks, even though they're outdoors and um, they're having little gatherings at their home because they think, you know, it, it's safe just between me and my family. It's not something that people are taking as seriously, each and every one of us as we need to be taking this in the peak of the pandemic? Sadly, it looks like some people, the only lesson that they will take is when a family member, a friend or a relative start passing away or being seriously sick, which is a very unfortunate thing because if we allow that to become a lesson, then it means we still have some numbers that will go up before we can contain this. Mm. So what do you make of the reintroduction of some of the level five regulations, including now the ban on the sale of alcohol and that nighttime curfew between uh, 9 p.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning? Obviously, there are things that we can't reintroduce. We, you know, we can't go back to level five of the lockdown. Uh, that's what the minister, the health minister himself has said. We need to learn to live with the coronavirus. Our economy needs to get going again. So is this the best way for government to try and sort of bring back some of the seriousness of level five, but still keep the economy going somewhat? 
Certainly, this particular pandemic has always had a dilemma of having to make sure that the economy doesn't completely collapse, in which case it will lead to many more people dying of poverty. At the same time, you want to save life from the immediate disease. So that balance itself is very critical, and government, by its own admission, doesn't have the capacity to distribute even the intervention funds which are there to support small businesses. What they've done then is to say, continue with your activities. We leave it up to you to make sure that you enforce safety measures whilst the economy is going on. But with the alcohol ban and the curfew at night, I think this was expected. He seemed to allude to this explanation to say, every other statistic indicated that once alcohol was unbanned, mm. this of behavior which imperil people went up and most of these are in the evenings the road accidents the people killing or stabbing each other and that is beginning to put pressure on our health system so this was expected some of us had even argued you can't ban cigarettes and open alcohol yeah yeah. I mean, you, you said it yourself, Prof. Uh, Gender-based violence cases, we saw an increase there just as soon as the ban on the sale of alcohol was lifted a few weeks ago. Uh, trauma admissions to hospitals, those also increased. And we know we can't afford to waste our beds, our hospital beds, on trauma incidents related to alcohol. Uh, but just in terms of, you know, the industry, uh, the alcohol industry, so the president announces this decision last night. It's with immediate effect. Plenty of people decrying the fact that, you know, the president can't just make regulations and say they are in place uh, with immediate effect before those regulations are gazetted. And just a few minutes later, the announcement was made, those regulations were uh, gazetted and they are in place with immediate effect. Is this ideally how we want to, as a government, deal with any kinds of regulations that we put in place? Well, these are unusual times, and as such, we should accept that uh, many of the press briefings, even by the president himself, had signaled that we may return to the banning of alcohol or restrictions on alcohol. Other ministers did the same. So I'm sure people will have taken a signal. What could have happened if you said, we are giving you two more days? Yes. One Jobs will have been jammed, people trying to actually stock up. Trucks would have been coming to collect the alcohol, and therefore you'll have weeks when people are trying to consume this alcohol. Some may even take monies which were intended for other things within the families to do just that. All what we have to do in South Africa is that rights come with responsibilities. We have always emphasized as a country only rights. And as such, during the times of emergency, you can't go to war and still insist that each and every right, even when there is demonstrable evidence that it imperils the public safety, then you insist that we need to stock up our trucks before you ban. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we certainly are at a time of war against COVID-19. Uh, Professor, as always, thanks very much for your time here on the AM Report. Professor Somadora Fikeni is a political analyst. He's at the University of South Africa.